Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is always the fastest man in any room he walks into. He's played for the Miami Dolphins, Carolina Panthers, Arizona Cardinals, and now the New Orleans Saints. From the Ohio State University, Ted Ginn, it is so good to meet you. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get to your NFL stuff, I want to go back to high school. I think a lot of people think Akron, they think LeBron. You guys are around the same age. So did you ever play against him? Well, you know, uh, I played against him for sure, but it was only a scrimmage. It only a only, scrimmage. It was only a, a scrimmage. But, uh, you know, he, he was always a big guy, did his deal, and, uh, you know, played at a high level. Were you guys friends? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like in, in, the, in the city uh, from, from Ohio, you know, you kind of uh, get in touch with all the big name guys, you know, no matter if it's football, basketball, track. With me being able to do both for as football and track, you know, kind of gave me the lime, like, and, uh, you know, we had plenty of times that we hung out, uh, crossed paths at a lot of different events and different things like that growing up. And uh, as I got older and uh, I went to, well, he went to the uh, NBA in uh, my senior year, uh, I drove his car to prom, my wife's senior year, we drove one of his cars to prom, so. Um, Wait, what? So, you know. We, 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 what? Explain that. You just so, you drove know, one of his cars to prom. Yeah, you know. Uh, and I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of like uh, up our way, we try to give some of the guys that's doing well, you know, we try to give them an opportunity to, you know, stay in the limelight or uh, be the guy that yeah. they are. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to go to your high class friends to try to, you know, be who you say you are, you know. Oh, you know, so you so. were trying to like flex. Yeah, flex. A okay. Bit, you know, so, so you're like being a me. seniors prom, you oh. know. Uh, I got my license. You know, you always usually go out and get some type of rental car. Well, I rented mine from LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Uh, I drove a Denali truck the first year, and then I drove uh, uh, I want to say like 600 BNs, BMW wow. the next year. So did did he have a fee for this or just? Here, use my car. Well, yeah, it was like uh, keep up the good work type deal. Okay. You know, stay relevant, keep doing who you is. Wow. You know, uh, and the connection came from uh, Rich Paul, you know. Uh, right. With me knowing Rich Paul, you know, gave me that opportunity to either get in the room with him, you know, and then be able to even drive one of his cars. So, picks up the Rich. So, from Miami, you're traded to the 49ers, and you're playing in the Super Bowl against yes. the Ravens. So you have a chance then to win the Super Bowl if you can return the kickoff for a touchdown. You made a lot of fans very nervous. At that point, what's going through your mind before the play? The same thing the fans probably think, like, man, I got to get this ball. <laughs> it's only, what, five seconds left, four yeah. seconds left in the game. Like, I got to try to make the biggest play in the world yeah. that I can make. Uh, but, you know, he just went out there and just tried to execute it. You know, you have Flacco on the, on the other side. Yeah. Like, um, if that guy get the ball, man, I might have to come off the sideline and tackle him, you know. And telling his teammates to do the like same getting, thing. Like, getting, like, yeah. Which is, like, cheat, cheating. Yeah. Because he knew that they weren't going to say, oh, okay, you get an automatic touchdown uh, or whatever. Yeah. He's just trying to save his ring. How much do you think the blackout affected the game? Um, a lot. Yeah. A lot, you know. Uh, at that time, you know, it's, it's kind of like where I'm at in, 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 my, in my day and age, you know, kind of on that older upper end, you know. So I would say coming out and that blackout hit, it gave them an opportunity to, uh, you know, slow us down a little bit because we had came out second half kind of rolling. Right. Little, and uh, we was like kind of like in the fight and then that happened and then it was just like, you got to try to get that momentum back. And they kind of already, like, sustained it a little bit. Right. So also Colin Kaepernick was on that team, obviously. A lot has happened since then. What did you think of him then as a leader and as a teammate? Oh, man, he was a great guy. Yeah. But at the same time, he was a young guy. Okay. So he kind of got, like, a lot of leadership from the older guys, like, you know, how to do this. Brad, you got to speak up here on certain things. You got to do this. You got to do that. Uh, but it was just a lot going on because of the controversy that he had with, Alex Smith at the time, and uh, they always both playing at a high level, you know, and Harbaugh made the decision to go with him. And uh, we all just brand around him and uh, just make sure that we can do whatever we can to make him be who he was at the time, and we did. Has there ever been a time in your career where you felt like 
a coach treated you unfairly or someone doubted you? Well, yeah, you know, I had a, uh, I had a whole year of doubt. Okay. You know, uh, went to Arizona, coming off uh, the 2013 season. Uh, I had a great season with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they kind of like rebirthed me a little bit. Uh, Arizona gave me a deal. I went out there and I, th I thought I was going to be their guy, you know. And for whatever reason, man, I only I didn't replay, really you know. Uh, I didn't play the amount that I thought I should, you know, for what they was, you know, kind of paying me. Mm -hmm. uh, the end of that year, they cut me, you know, and then I ended up going back to Carolina, mm -hmm. you know. And that little off season, it was just like, you know, uh, can't believe this, you know, like in doubt of myself, like what was going on to where they didn't have opportunity for me out there, you know. So when I got back with Carolina, uh, I just got into drive and, and I was just like, man, I, I went till I hit a wall, you know, and I've been a drive ever since. So when you look back now at your time at Arizona, how do you feel about it now? Oh, I'm glad that, you know, it gave me that eye opener. Okay. That, you know, no matter what, no matter who you is, you know, you gotta go through different trials and tribulations to continue to be who you are, you know, and uh, without the support of, you know, my family and friends, you know, uh, it was hard to get through that deal. Am I right to assume that last year with the Saints, you thought you were on the way to another Super Bowl? Yes. You yeah. know, the last two years, I would last say. Last two years. You know, and, uh, you know, we all know what happened in the first year, just Minnesota, and we all know what happened in the second year, yeah. just L.A. But, uh, you know, it was... It was what you what you fight for in this game, you know. It's you know, playoffs, win a division, try to go to win a Super Bowl, uh, and you know, being in this league is so hard to even make one. I know. Then to make two, so I just it's just even harder to make three, you know. But uh, with the team that we have this year, you know, with the Saints, uh, the coaching staff that we have, the organization, you know, uh, we're gonna fight to get back to that elite level again. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game, on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.